This is uh, lo shuttle launch control at T minus nine minutes and holding. Uh, standing by for uh, a release uh, of the hold based on the based on the uh, ship uh, getting out of the launch danger area uh, where the SRBs come down. This is about 150 miles off of the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, also continuing to assess the weather uh, and the optimum time to pick up the count and try and uh, launch uh, this morning. The window for this morning's launch uh, extends from uh, 6.55 a.m. Uh, to 7.49 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, and during this particular point in the countdown at T minus nine, uh, we are able to hold uh, throughout that entire uh, period. This is shuttle launch control at T minus nine minutes and holding. We have just had uh, word from launch director Bob Seek that we have go as far as the weather is concerned. We are just about to reset the clock and pick up the countdown at the nine minute point. We will be counting down to five minutes and holding there uh, to allow the ship to clear the area. The clock resuming, two, one, mark, T minus nine minutes and counting. Uh, prior to coming out of this uh, hold, we had a status check and were assured that with the exception of the range safety officer, everybody was ready to go. Uh, the crew sounded particularly enthusiastic. Uh, at this point, the launch events are now being controlled by the ground launch sequencer and a cheer going up here in the firing room as the range safety officer says, you have a final go to launch from range safety. The launch events being controlled now by the ground launch sequencer up until the 25 second uh, point when they switch to the onboard redundant set launch sequencer. The GLS is uh, uh, part of the launch processing system and operates by relaying commands from uh, to the orbiters onboard computers which then report back uh, that they have been executed successfully. The primary job of the onboard computers is to check that all of the launch commit criteria such as propellant loads, temperatures, pressures, and other measurements are normal. Seven seconds away from moving the uh, swing arm that is used by the astronauts for reaching the orbiter. T minus seven minutes, 28 seconds. And we have a go for uh, retract of the crew access arm. And that is swinging back away from discovery. Uh, if emergency should arise, that can be placed back into position within 15 seconds. Houston is uh, presently sending a final update to the onboard computers for antenna management. Uh, this uh, tells the uh, antennas which way to look to find the TDRS satellite and also the ground tracking stations. The uh, AC electrical bus sensors have been placed uh, in monitor by pilot Dick Covey. T minus six minutes, 45 seconds and counting. T minus six minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Pilot Dick Covey uh, asked to perform the auxiliary power unit pre-start. This consists of positioning a number of switches and verifying they're in the proper position, then throwing the three propellant isolation valve switches, which allow the hydrazine fuel to start flowing from the tanks towards the APUs. T minus six minutes and counting. 
And pilot Dick Covey reporting the APUs are now configured for startup. T minus five minutes forty seconds and counting. In five seconds, the flight recorders will be turned on. These provide measurement of the shuttle system performance during the entire mission. The five minute point will have a go for APU start. Coming up on the five minute point, T minus five minutes and counting. And we have a go for orbiter APU start. I'll report back, APU start is in work. T minus four minutes, 45 seconds and counting. The oxygen uh, fill and drain valve uh, has been closed, uh, topping of the tank complete and uh, oxygen drain back uh, has started. This means that liquid oxygen is flowing through the main propulsion system and back to the large storage tank. We've had a report from the pilot that APU start is complete and three APUs are up and running. Coming up on the four minute point in our countdown, the main fuel valve heaters have been turned on or turned off by Commander Joe Engel. T minus four minutes and counting. The astronaut crew has closed the visors on their launch and entry helmets, and the final helium purge of the orbiter's main engines has started. Commander Joe Engel saying uh, that they're ready to get out of Dodge. T minus three minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. Shuttle now on internal power. LTVSP, go. Okay, the uh, engine valves are go at four minutes. Copy, thank you. A check of the engine valves reveals that they are go. A profile check of the aerosurfaces is now complete and verified and the aerosurfaces in launch position. T minus three minutes and counting. The liquid oxygen valve for filling the external tank is closed and pressurization has begun. T minus two minutes, 50 seconds. The gaseous oxygen vent arm uh, being retracted at this point. T-minus 2 minutes, 25 seconds, and counting. Gaseous oxygen and vent arm lifting nicely. And the caution and memory warning uh, has been cleared. Coming up on the two-minute point in our countdown. T-minus 2 minutes and counting. The liquid oxygen vent valve now has been closed and flight pressurization is underway. T minus one minute, 45 seconds and counting. And the computer will automatically verify the readiness of the main engines at the T minus one minute point. Ninety seconds away from liftoff of 51I. T minus one minute, 15 seconds, and the liquid hydrogen tank is at flight pressure. Coming up on the one minute point in our countdown, T minus one minute. 
the firing system for the sound suppression water system is armed. And the hydrogen igniters under the orbiter's engines have been armed. Uh, these devices ensure that any free hydrogen uh, will not build up to uh, cause a small explosion at engine ignition. T minus 40 seconds in counting. Coming up on the 31 second point, and we have a go for auto sequence start. And we have auto sequence start with the sequencer on the orbiter now controlling the final seconds up to launch. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have a go for main engine start. And we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one. Ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of A51I and a commercial deploy and repair mission. It has cleared the tower. Roger roll, Discovery. Roll program initiated. Houston now controlling. Roger that. Beginning throttle down now to 65 percent. Three engines throttling down now to 65 percent. Altitude three nautical miles. Three engines in the throttle down condition to manage the uh, maximum aerodynamic pressure as the uh, spacecraft approaches uh, max Q at 743 pounds per square foot. Three engines now running at 104%, uh, giving a go at the throttle up. One minute, 20 seconds, velocity 3,200 feet per second, altitude 11 nautical miles, downrange distance 7 nautical miles. Three APUs running normally, three good fuel cells operating. One minute, 40 seconds, velocity 4,400 feet per second. Altitude 18 nautical miles, downrange distance 16 nautical miles. for solid rocket booster separation. Separation confirmed, velocity 5,400 feet per second. Altitude 27 nautical miles, guidance converging is programmed. Two minutes, 25 seconds, velocity 5,700 feet per second, altitude 32 nautical miles. Discovery Houston, first stage performance nominal. First stage nominal, very good. Mike. That call up from Capcom Mike Coates uh, to the commander Joe Engel indicates the first stage performance is uh, nominal. Velocity 6,200 feet per second, altitude 38 nautical miles, downrange distance 56 nautical miles, 2 minutes 50 seconds. Three engines still at 104%. Three auxiliary power units functioning normally. Three good fuel cells. Three minutes, 10 seconds. Velocity, 6,800 feet per second. Altitude, 44 nautical miles. Return status and mission control.